we are back with Dr. Kelly Gebhardt and we're talking about all things pet related. So we talked about pet allergies. Now we're on to the snake bites. What are some snake bite symptoms that we should be aware of? Right, so the first thing you're probably gonna see is swelling. Um, you may see some redness or purple discoloration of the skin. You may or may not see fang marks because the swelling may close those fang marks down. And there will likely be some degree of pain, either from uncomfortable to excruciating pain. In very severe ones, you may see vomiting, diarrhea, weakness, or collapse. But the most common signs we see are pain, lameness, swelling at the site of the bite, dis tissue discoloration, and you may or may not see fang marks or blood dripping from the area of the bite. Okay, so what do you do if you think that your pet has been bitten? Anytime you think they've been bitten, that is an emergency and you should seek veterinary care. Um, you should not apply a tourniquet or ice or try and cut and suck the venom out or any of those techniques. The best thing to do is seek veterinary care immediately and get proper treatment. If you can take a picture of the snake to identify it, that's great. Um, we ask that you do not kill a snake and bring it in in a bucket. Um, we would prefer that. No, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to a few of the questions that folks are asking. Um, yeah. Are there less expensive alternatives for dogs rather than Apoquel? And what is Apoquel? So Apoquel is um, in immunotherapy to help decrease the body's immune response to an allergen. There are so many options out there now, um, like cytopoint and other things that you can talk with your regular vet about, about options for um, medications to help decrease the allergic response. It doesn't remove the pet's allergy, but it decreases their response to it, and it, it affects different parts of the uh, allergy pathway in the body. Different drugs do different things. So once you remove the drug, the allergy will come back, or those allergic symptoms will come back. So the, uh, the medications are just suppressing the allergic symptoms, but it overall does good things for the pet's quality of life and overall for the body. So um, you definitely want to talk with your regular vet about options of what's best for your pet and what are the prices for those different options based on the size of your pet and the other medications they may, may be on. But we're really fortunate that there are a lot of medications now available to treat allergies. Okay, um, I'm probably gonna say this drug name wrong, but you can help me with it. Our dog has been taking Lanzoprazole uh, uh -huh. for about a year due to stomach issues and vomiting. Is this advisable? Um. So it's an antacid, basically, um, and there are a bunch of different antacid options out there. That's prevacid. So um, if your veterinarian has recommended it, I think it's appropriate for your pet. Um, and there are lots of different options out there. So if you feel that that one's not that effective um, or uh, they're just options. So I think that an antacid for stomach issues is appropriate. I don't know your pet's particular situation, but we prescribe a variety of antacids all the time for all kinds of stomach and esophageal issues. So it sounds like it's probably appropriate. <laughs> okay. Um, this person says, my cat has licked his chest and stomach bald. He now has to wear a cone, but if we take it off, he'll lick everything. Vet has him on a steroid and an antibiotic. Is there anything else we can do? Oh, poor kitten. Um, so that definitely sounds like allergies. It could be flea allergies or other allergies. You want to make sure, or even a food allergy, you want to make sure that um, you have 100% flea control in your household. So all pets are on flea control and um, you, you, there can't be any fleas in the household. You want to explore the food allergy option because sometimes food allergies can present in that way as well with excessive grooming. Um, and you want to talk about other alternative um, allergy medications to maybe, because long-term steroid use can have negative side effects in the body, including diabetes and other issues. So maybe exploring some alternative allergy medications um, would be important. And um, that could be environmental allergies as well. So managing, um, you know, with allergy medications is important. So it sounds like there's definitely a lot of things left to explore there. And for your cat's quality of life, you know, living in the e-collar is probably not the best quality of life, but looking at it's over grooming is also not great. So I would explore more options. Anxiety might be another contributor to that as well. Mm -hmm. There could definitely be um, over grooming due to anxiety or behavioral issues. So okay. lots to explore there, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, when we come back, we got one more segment, so feel free to text in your question. We're going to talk about Easter coming up, and is it a good idea to get your kids chicks, bunnies, and ducks, and things of that nature? So we're going to talk about that when we come back.